Yo guys! So do you ever wake up and say, Today, I want to build a supercomputer? Probably not, but I get these urges to do so, so I'm here to show you how to build a supercomputer. So if you watched my previous video on quantum computing, you know that scientists are gearing up to make computers stronger and more powerful than ever before. Now obviously, I can't show you how to build a quantum computer, but we can make a basic Linux cluster, aka a supercomputer. Now to do this, you will need to make sure that you have at least two devices running Linux. We're going to be using the program mPitch, and to put it simply, mPitch is a software used for parallel systems. It pretty much relays processes or information to different nodes on a network. Really kind of hard to explain. If you want the full explanation, I'll write a link in the description below. But for now, let's take a look at how to build a supercomputer. Let's get to it. Okay guys. So before we can begin building this awesome supercomputer, we're first going to download a few prerequisites. So go and open up Terminal. I'm going to grant Terminal super user access just so I don't have to keep typing in sudo every time I type in a command. You don't have to do this, but I think it'll make your life a little bit easier. Alright, next we're going to install the G++ compiler. Afterwards, install the GCC compiler. Again, you might already have this installed. Finally, do an apt git update to make sure all the repositories are up to date. Finally, install the Fortran compiler. Yeah, I know, Fortran's really old, but this program actually uses it, so make sure you have it installed, and I probably doubt that you have it already installed on your system. Okay, so now I'm going to clear the terminal, just to, so we can keep everything neat. Now what you want to do is add a new user. You want this user to have the same name on both systems. So I'm going to go and add a user, Dave. Again, this user already exists on my Chromebook. The password doesn't have to be the same, it could be whatever you want. And finally, you can keep all these fields blank. Now add this user to the sudo group. Finally, log out and back in to that user. Okay, now that you're logged in to the user that you just created, you need to download and install OpenSSH Server. Now go to the mpeach website and download the mpeach program for Linux. I'm going to use version 3.04 just because I'm running trusty. And go and download the tar gz file. Again, I'll provide all these links over my website. Once it's downloaded, it, go and extract it. I'm going to extract it to my downloads directory. Now navigate to your home folder and create a new directory called mpeach. I'm going to use the ls command just to make sure that the directory exists. Cool, and it's there. Now navigate to the mpeach folder that you extracted from the zip. Within that folder, run the configure script followed by the parameters prefix, home, your username, and the mpeach folder we created. This script will configure all the necessary files. Now type in make. This will start making a program. Finally, type in make install. Okay, next we need to edit the host file. I'm going to download and install the text editor nano. You can use whatever editor that you like. So now, type in sudo nano etc host. Now, within this file, 
what you need to do is you need to put the IP address and the host name of each computer that you're using as part of this cluster. So I have worker one, which is the computer I'm on right now with this IP address, and my Chromebook running Linux, I type in the IP address, and I'm going to name it worker zero. Now, just to make sure it works, what we can do is use the ping command, and I can go back and ping worker zero. And if all goes well, it should work. Now, navigate back to your home folder and edit the bash RC file. At the bottom of the file, paste the following that I have. This is going to export the path for the bin folder as well as the library path for the mpeach. Finally, to check if it worked, close terminal and reopen it and type in which MPI CC and you should see a footer location and do the same thing for which MPI EXEC and it should also show you a folder location. If all that works, then you're all set and ready to run the cluster program. All right, so now I'm on my Chromebook continuing this tutorial. That's just because I want to show you that it works on both systems. And also, I actually can't SSH to my Chromebook because of Chrome security reasons, but that's besides the point. Now what you want to do is create an SSH key so that you can SSH to the other computer without needing a password. So we want to keep all the values default. I already have one, so I'm going to overwrite my existing key. And again, you don't want any passphrases. Now, you want to copy ID and you want to use the other worker. So in my case, I'm going to use worker zero. Actually, no, I want to use worker one. And I want to SSH copy ID to that worker. If it's your first time, it's going to prompt you for the other computer's login password. Just type that in. Now, what we want to do is SSH to the other worker. And if you did a key gen right, you shouldn't have to type in a password. So this is very important. You don't want a password for the SSH. Now, what you need to do is go and navigate to the mpeach folder. Now again, we're on the other worker. So we're navigating to that mpeach folder. And now we need to create a host file. The file doesn't have to be called host, it can be called whatever you want. But the importance of this file is that we want to specify the workers that we have on this network and the number of processes that we want each worker to run. So in my case, I have worker zero and I'm putting two, and I have worker one and I'm putting two as well. You can change the number of processes. You can say four, you can say six, but I'm gonna just keep it at two. Okay, so now we can do control O to save, control X to exit from nano. And we're gonna exit the SSH and we're gonna go back and do the same thing on our local system. So I'm gonna go to the mpeach folder I'm going to create a file called host, have to keep the name the same, and I'm going to keep the amount of workers the same and the processes the same. Again, you could have done this in reverse order, it really doesn't matter the order in which you do this in, just make sure this file exists on both systems. Now, you need to go to the mpeach folder that you extracted from the download, and there, there should be examples folder. You want to copy and paste that to the mpeach directory that you have your host file in. And you also want to do this on your remote system as well. I know this kind of seems a little bit weird. The problem is, since we're not using a shared file system, we have to make sure that whatever you do on your local system, as far as that mpeach folder, is replicated on a remote system for the mpeach folder. In this case, the examples folder from the folder that we extracted from the downloads, we want it to be in the mpeach folder on our local system and the mpeach folder on our remote system, just so that we can run one of the programs within that and it'll be on both systems. Okay, so within the examples folder, you should see a program called CPI. This calculates the exact value of pi. So in terminal, we're going to type a command using mp exec in that CPI file and using four processes. You should see an output that looks like this. If this works, then congratulations, you just made your first supercomputer. So as you can see, the first two processes are executed on my Chromebook localhost. The other two processes are executed on my laptop. Now, again, this is such a small scale program. You could write your own larger programs to make use of multiple processes on multiple computers if you have a larger network. 
this is still really cool and just the fact that this one process which will normally execute on a computer has been shared between two computers that is the beauty of parallel computing and building a supercomputer so guys there you have it that is how you can build a supercomputer now like i mentioned if you had multiple nodes on your network and very powerful systems this could be a really huge beast so definitely play around with it so guys if you liked this video definitely give it a thumbs up don't forget to head over to Twitter and follow me at Davey Ben. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.